Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd. I, I went through and I printed this Yoda bowl and I told you about it in a previous video, but there's a lot more detail about how I printed it, why I printed it, and I thought I'd just tell you a little bit more about the process. So let's go behind the scenes. You ready? Go. It all started with Matt from Print and Solid. Matt said, hey, Joel, I really want to, I really want something big to hold candy in at Halloween. And I think, I think making a bowl out of a Yoda model would be, would be the best, would be, would be the best thing. And, and it's, it's, it's relevant, right? Because Star Wars is coming out and the trailer was just released. And so he spent, uh, he spent some time creating this Yoda model. He took, he took a Yoda model from Thingiverse of the face and using, Using Netfab, he he created this this bowl structure inside inside the Yoda head. Um, you might be wondering why there's a hole at the bottom. Well, I'll, I'll get into that in just a little bit. The Yoda model was designed to be huge. It was designed to to be printed with as little support as possible, which which led to some things which I'll get into. And it was easily not only the biggest thing I've ever printed, but it was also the hardest thing <laughs> I've ever printed. Oh man, that was tough. Let's first start with the design. So here is the bowl shape and you can see that there is kind of a, a tubular hole at the bottom. So this, this Yoda is, is built, this model is built to be printed with, with no internal infill. So it's a completely hollow model other than the perimeters of the inside and the outside. With that in mind, we had to be able to attach this inner bowl to the rest of the model while it was printing. So I printed with a couple bottom layers and then that tube at the bottom that was printed so that it had something to hold on to, a structure as it printed up and then the bowl printed. The, the model itself would be able to hold on and, and not shake too much as the, the printer's y-axis, which is the, the bed moving back and forth, moved the model back and forth. It turned out to work. It turned out really well. It works really well. This, this is a quality model. Um, you'll see that on this model. Let's see. Let's see if you can see it. Right. Oh, the lights. Come on. Right here. Right here. So uh, this is called stringing. And what happens is the printer attempts to print in midair. And printing in midair obviously doesn't work. So it strings down. And usually what would happen is support mechanisms, support structures would be would be built to go right here. Uh, I elected not to do that to save on filament and to save on printer time. And I, Matt agreed with me because he said, it's okay if the ears are a little stringy. I agree with him. When the model first comes off the printer, it looks just like this. In fact, this model here was pulled from the printer just a few hours ago. It's still got the stringy uh, filament on the ear. It's got the raft and it's got the support structures for the chin and the upper lip. It's printed all as one piece. Uh, you can tell that, that because the perimeters are the only thing holding the bottom layer to the rest of the model, it's kind of delicate. So when I'm trying to pull away this, this raft, it's, it's starting to, to pull away just, just a little bit at the bottom, uh, knowing that what will most likely happen is the raft will just be cut to shape and will act as another <laughs> bottom layer. You can see inside the bowl, it's got some, some stuff. And I think you can see the stringy, kind of the stringy bits that are going in between here. That has to do with the filament that I used. The algae-based filament that I used it prints at a fairly low temperature. I can think I can print it down to 180 degrees centigrade uh, and it melts really fast. So as the print head is moving over this open space to start printing on the next layer, uh, filament would ooze out of the hot end and deposit itself on the model. Um, it's kind of fun. So to clean that up, you, you, just, you just scrape it off. Uh, it's that easy. Nothing to worry about. 
Oh, hey, welcome to my floor. Here's my printer and here's the garbage that I keep under my printer. And you can tell it's full of partially printed green things. So one of the issues um, that I that I had with my printer is that the, the sheer size of this model meant I had to print with a raft so that I had an even printing surface. Um, but I went through many iterations of trying to print that raft just because I needed to find the right consistent or the right the right kind of what is it the right the right height and and the right way to print the the perimeter. Um, this was a failed piece. <laughs> This was a failed piece, and for some reason it did a, a crisscross pattern, and I'm, I'm not sure what exactly the, the setting was that, that, I, that I did with that one. Um, this was some of the support material. Um, this, this was a failed piece as well. One of, there were, there were two times that the print completely and totally failed, and yet I was still able to to recover here let me show you on the printer itself this red wire here this is the this is the power wire that goes to the the heater block here within the the hot end usually it gets carried up underneath and brought out over to here but i found that it was rubbing against this this rail and against one of the wheels and it was actually wearing down the coating on the wire so i just brought it over the top no harm no foul right unfortunately uh, the reason you see tape is because the wires actually pulled from the connector here and cooled down and caused the print to, the, the filament wouldn't extrude so the, the printer itself couldn't print anything. Uh, I fixed that with tape. There we go. See? Totally fixed. Uh, the other time it, it got jammed up in the extruder itself and, and I'm not exactly sure why that happened. But I was able to recover both times. And that's back to working. Even with the problems that I had, and even though it took nearly 24 hours for each model to print, when it was successful, I still had a rad time printing this thing. I mean, who wouldn't have fun printing this? Or this, I'm full of Yodas. I've got so many Yodas here. It's, it's amazing. Matt's gonna love this. Um, this project was fun and the file is available on Thingiverse like I posted in the video itself. Um, this is really good filament. It melts easily and it, and it produces a, a great color. Oh man, that's Yoda's color right there. Uh, and don't forget, you can get this filament at a discount at printedsolid.com using the coupon code down below. Well, that was a fun project. I really enjoyed printing it. Thanks for following along. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm more than happy to answer them. Uh, print something awesome. If you have a printer, collaborate with someone, do something awesome and make a difference and print awesome things. All right. Well, that's it for now. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And as always, high five. Oh, almost forgot. Uh, I got to take out the trash. So the filament does smell a little swampy. It is algae based. So when you, um, when you print with it, it has a very distinct smell. It's not, it's not bad, it's, it's just different. So I promised my wife I'd take out the trash because I'm awesome.